Hello everyone and welcome to this talk titled Reducing COSS Switching Loss in a GAN-based Resonant Cockroft Walton Converter Using Resonant Charge Redistribution. I'm going to start with a brief background on hybridized switch capacitor converters, taking a quick look at some previous attempts at complete zero voltage switching throughout some of these more complicated distributed switch networks. I'll then talk about an alternative technique, explain how it works, and show you some measured results. To give a very brief crash course into the background of hybridized switch capacitor power converters, we start with the premise that capacitors would serve as a much more effective energy transfer element relative to inductors, given that they have energy densities up to three orders of magnitude greater than that of inductors. And that's what's shown here on the left. However, there exists a problem which has been defined as the slow switching limit. This describes transient inrush currents which occur due to voltage mismatch across fly capacitors and results in a CV squared charge sharing loss which increases dramatically with increased load and subsequent fly capacitor voltage ripple. To surmount this, hybridized switched capacitor converters utilize some small inductance to remove these transient inrush currents, thereby making converters which predominantly rely on capacitive energy transfer highly effective. Since the vast majority of voltage conversion can now be performed by capacitive elements, the volt seconds on any inductor can be greatly reduced, allowing it to be significantly smaller in size. This has resulted in a number of hybridized switched capacitor topologies and techniques being published, which fully mitigate the slow switching limit, and in doing so have achieved record-breaking power densities as shown below. To briefly give you an illustrated example, Split phase switching, a technique which mimics the naturally occurring zero voltage switching behavior of diodes, was originally introduced in 2016 when used with a Dixon converter before being demonstrated with a Cockcroft Walton topology earlier this year. Using a single inductor, this approach recognizes zero voltage switching points in time to completely eliminate any abrupt inrush currents. Having addressed the slow switching limit, we have since moved on to developing fully hybridized switched capacitor converters, which now aim to resolve the next most dominant loss mechanisms. Now, try as we might, it seems we cannot escape from this classic trade-off between switching loss and conduction loss. Now, we can play games with altering our switching frequency and changing the size of our devices to trade one loss mechanism off for the other. However, we will still fundamentally be limited at light load due to our switching losses and at heavy load due to our conduction losses. Given this, as designers, we are searching for paradigm shifting approaches whereby topologically we can significantly reduce one or both loss mechanisms. In this work, we choose to focus on mitigating switching loss, knowing that improvements here will shift the envelope with respect to sizing and optimization of primary switching devices, allowing increased switching size for reduced conduction loss if desired. Now, within the umbrella term switching loss, there exists several different loss mechanisms. And in fact, we have another paper addressing gating loss in session 16 this week, so feel free to check that out if you're interested. However, in this work, we choose to focus on our switching device's output capacitance, or COSS loss. This CV squared loss occurs any time a switch turns on while a bias exists across its drain to source capacitance. Energy is wasted as all of the charge stored in this capacitance is dissipated within its own channel. Likewise, energy is lost if this capacitor is abruptly charged after the switch is turned off. This loss mechanism is fundamentally equivalent to slow switching limit losses, but rather than pertaining to the fly capacitors, instead we are talking about the non-ideal parasitic capacitors of the switches themselves. To demonstrate this in an actual converter, here we have a 1 to 5 Cockroft Walton where I have little heat waves depicting unmitigated COSS loss being burnt off in each switch after turning on. Now, this happens even at no load conditions where slow switching limit losses shrink to zero due to the absence of any fly capacitor voltage ripple. Unfortunately, this loss also scales proportionally with frequency. To avoid this, we are striving towards zero voltage switching conditions where a switch is only turned on once its drain to source voltage has shrunk to zero via external means. Now, many soft switching approaches already exist, but there is a limited number that apply these techniques to the distributed switch arrays that make up complex hybridized switched capacitor networks. A few examples which offer either partial or complete zero voltage switching are depicted here.
As mentioned, the split phase scheme on the left achieves zero voltage switching, but only across a few select switches throughout the entire converter, and only once there is appreciable fly capacitor ripple. Otherwise, COSS loss persists. Zichao Ye's 2019 piece demonstrated at APEC used reverse inductor current to fully soft switch all four switches in a resonant doubler. However, this approach requires both a minimum energy to be stored within its inductor come a switching transition and a periodic reversal of inductor current, making it ineffective at light load and unsuitable for continuous forward conduction. Thirdly, last year at APEC, Infineon demonstrated a Dixon topology which included a freewheeling inductor which would ensure zero voltage switching of all switches. However, this inductor continuously conducts current throughout each phase, resulting in it contributing non-negligible conduction losses and disallowing discontinuous conduction or pulse frequency modulation for light load efficiency. In this work, instead we take inspiration from a concept discussed some years ago in the field of energy harvesting. Here, an approach termed bias flip demonstrated that the dampening effects of parasitic capacitance associated with a piezoelectric device could be dramatically reduced by introducing a very small inductor whose job it was to quickly resonate this capacitance to its opposite polarity before ensuing with a conventional rectification phase. However, this approach focused on adiabatically redistributing the charge stored on the single intrinsic capacitance of the harvester's power source. In contrast, in this work, we instead attempt to apply this same principle to the much more complex parasitic capacitance network of the converter itself, depicted here as a lumped equivalent capacitance. So here we wish to introduce an inductor whose job it is to act during the dead time interval between primary phases to effectively and appropriately redistribute all charge stored across all COSS capacitors. When applied correctly, this resonant charge redistribution, or RCR, should result in complete zero voltage switching across all switches come the subsequent switching phase. Note here that I've also included a small catching diode to relax the turn off timing constraints of the switch. This just helps to stop charge from resonating back to its original location if there are any timing errors. It also helps to reduce inductor conduction to the minimum required. The question then becomes where to apply this inductor within the converter such that it appropriately rebiases all parasitic capacitance, and if it acts during the dead time, how long does it need to complete its work? So in the next couple of slides, we'll look at answering these questions. Regarding placement, there are a few options, but one relatively straightforward location is depicted here in red using an example hybridized Cockroft-Walton converter. This is a similar placement to Infineon's freewheeling inductor approach applied to the Dixon topology. However, the switch SR is used here to constrain conduction such that it only occurs during phase transitions, thereby significantly reducing conduction loss in LR. Now, the black inductor LP is used here for hybridization purposes and interacts with the fly capacitors to mitigate the slow switching limit, say using the split phase technique, for example. But that is not what we're going to focus on. Here, the red inductor LR is our resonant COSS redistribution inductor that will be used to achieve zero voltage switching. In contrast to LP, which must conduct the entire low side current, this inductor can be made very small while still exhibiting a very high Q factor as it only interacts with COSS switch parasitics. To demonstrate how this can work, here we have an illustration of what a typical phase progression might look like. Rather than showing complete split phase switching, here I have constrained operation to two primary phases for simplicity. During phase one, we conduct our primary energy flow through the converter onto the output. Before transitioning to phase two, we enter our first dead time interval, dead time one. At this time, we engage LR to quickly redistribute all charge stored in parasitic switch capacitors. Then we initialize phase two. Similarly, parasitic charge is reversed using LR before returning to phase one. To convince yourself that charge is redistributed appropriately, I would suggest you focus on a few of the more easily discernible switches to begin with. For example, during phase one, we see that the capacitance associated with switch S1 is charged to V in, whereas during dead time one, it is resonated down to zero volts, thereby affecting zero voltage switching come phase two. All other switches are similarly appropriately charged and discharged.
To further examine LR's parasitic interactions and estimate the required dead time duration, we can redraw our converter with all primary switches off, as would be the case during a dead time transition. Since LR only interacts with the high frequency parasitics, all fly capacitors can be regarded as DC voltage sources. Similarly, LP acts as a high frequency choke and can be ignored. Now, there's a little bit of rearranging going on here, but it's pretty straightforward, and in the interest of time, I'm not going to talk you through it. From here, we can now easily convert this into an AC model by shorting independent voltage sources, and it then becomes trivial to calculate a subsequent lumped LC resonant tank. Now, it's worth noting here that in the paper we discuss some specific sizing constraints required in order to theoretically achieve perfectly symmetric redistribution. For example, here we would like the combined capacitance of C1 and C9 to equal that of C3, and likewise for C2 and C4 and C5. This can be done with appropriate switch sizing, added dummy capacitance, or ignored for an approximate solution. Next, a discrete prototype was constructed as depicted here. To keep things more ideal, an air core inductor was used for LR to avoid any saturation complications. And yet, as is, the components that are introduced to affect resonant charge redistribution only contribute 0.7% to the total solution volume, where the converter measures approximately 0.08 cubic inches. Very large gallium nitride FETs were used as COSS-related losses are to be significantly reduced with RCR. As such, optimal switch sizing may shift towards larger devices for reduced conduction losses. The vast majority of the converter is made up of PCB volume and free space, as depicted in the volume charts on the right. To keep things simple and avoid the complex timing requirements of split phase switching, diodes were used in place of synchronous switches for S5 through S9, as shown here on the right. Synchronous switches may of course be used, say if step-down capabilities are required, but this would add a degree of clocking complexity and added components that we didn't want to deal with here. Two conventional half-bridge drivers were used to switch S1 through S4 and two small opposing GAN FETs with small parallel Schottky diodes were used to affect SR. We note that appropriate phase advanced clocking signals for SR can be easily synthesized using existing clocking waveforms in neighboring power FETs. To demonstrate some results, here I'm showing two efficiency curves with and without resonant charge redistribution enabled. You can see a significant efficiency improvement when using RCR with a measured 61% reduction in total losses at light load. By increasing the input voltage up to 32 volts, I was able to squeeze 262 watts out of this converter while switching at 840 kilohertz. This resulted in a measured power density of 2,980 watts per cubic inch, where volume is defined as a best fit cuboid encompassing all active circuitry as depicted. Taking a look now at some measured waveforms, we see significant switch node ringing with RCR disabled as COSS energy is dissipated as either EMI or heat throughout the converter. Conversely, enabling RCR results in much smoother waveforms as this loss mechanism is greatly reduced. If we now zoom in on a specific phase transition, we see that without RCR, switch nodes VA and VB must abruptly transition to their new bias points once the next phase engages. With RCR enabled, we see that SR closes during the dead time and losslessly redistributes parasitic charge to the correct locations before the next phase engages. To conclude, here we have proposed the use of resonant charge redistribution, or RCR, to significantly reduce switching losses in a hybridized switched capacitor power converter. The paper provides a few more experimental results and goes into a little more detail talking about the effects of non-linear COSS capacitance. Fortunately, since approximately half the switches are being charged while the other half are discharged, nonlinear COSS effects can be somewhat cancelled out. And in fact, little to no steps were taken to optimize the presented prototype, leaving room for significant improvement. That being said, preliminary tests have demonstrated up to a 61% reduction in total losses at light load and a 20% reduction in loss at half the maximum load, all while contributing a near negligible volume increase.
including a very small synchronously controlled inductor dedicated solely towards parasitic interactions, removes any energy constraints placed on the primary inductor in order to achieve zero voltage switching. Similarly, limiting conduction to the minimum window necessary removes unwanted conduction losses in this assistive circuitry. While in this prototype a dead time of about 20 to 30 nanoseconds was used, this window may be shortened considerably by engaging LR prematurely to effectively ramp up its current to a predefined level, and as such this may be the focus of future work. In closing, by significantly reducing switching losses, RCR moves the envelope with respect to optimal sizing of primary switching devices and allows for increased switch size and reduced conduction losses. Lastly, I would like to thank EPC and Texas Instruments for helping us out with some donated parts. And so that's it. So please feel free to submit any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.